closer to so I will start uh, where I stopped <laughs> last time I will uh, uh, start with this uh, begin with this um, concept of uh, knots as um, force and uh, an attractor of energy in order to, to stress the relationship between knots and uh, force and the energy, which, um, which are re very needed to, to make knots. And we will discover some interesting things uh, in um, related to recent uh, discoveries made in science <coughs> and also to some reflection made in philosophy, which are very close to the work, to the work of uh, Eilerson. So, yeah. So I, as I, I said last time in, in his work la, la, uh, on free day, uh, in his work, Ayerson shows the energetic force of knots. So the knot is the locks of the articulation of the strings, spring from the material and dynamical space of the canvas. Some force acts on the string in a way that it acquired the shape of a knot. We can say that the knot is a living form that encapsulates the energy, the energy liberated by this force. An analogous idea has been developed by the artist Robert Morris. We know the significance Morris attached in the search for knowledge of any object to the understanding of the force of gravity as it is exerted on an object in a given space. Now, with Ayers, the knot carries within it a strength that contracts and shapes space. In addition to being, to being a nucleus from which the twisted string, the fold of the canvas and the textile surface itself spread out. The space of the work of the canvas having undergone change because of various energetic propulsion impetus of the primordial knot is as a teed in with a much broader space in which the artist's imagination has, can exert all these force. Through the form of the archetypal knot, a concrete writing of the world by means of which a more poetic vision of the universe can open up. Ayers makes the passage, the transition from the singular to the universal, from the infinitely small to the infinitely large. And uh, you see on this photo, on this image, you have a very recent uh, discovery which is, uh, to, to summarize, the problem is that when you have a chaotic system, this chaotic system form knots, is made by knots. You see on the right a Lorentz, what is called a Lorentz strange attractor, this one. No, this is, a, this is of the orbit of knots. You see, it's like a, a toric knot, and when these uh, orbits interlace or intertwine, they form like a chaotic orbit and, and a set of chaotic orbit. And if you put uh, like a microscope on this uh, every local site of this uh, field, you can you can you can see knots. It's a very important uh, discovery because um, 
yeah, you have this strange attractor and uh, what we call the, the periodic orbits. On the links, you have a torus knot, which is the same, in fact. This is the, the model of this, and this, you have a set of torus knots. Let me explain what it means a little bit. It's a very important result, a recent result. Now, here, in chaotic phenomenon, in the Lorentz strange attractor, a knot can be realized as a Lorentz knot if and only if, I will not go in detail, of course, but it's a very deep result, if and only if it can be realized as a modular knot. What is a modular knot? It is a knot which corresponds, in very sim simple language, to the periodic orbits in a flow, in a fluid flow, for example, forming knots contained in the complement space of the trifoil knot. The complement space, what we call the complement space of the knot is uh, the space inside the knot, which is not uh, in included in the knot itself. And this uh, complement space is very, very, very rich in structure, in properties, and uh, in behaviors. In other words, mm -hmm. the class of Lorentz knots co coincides with the class of a modular knot. Look at this uh, very beautiful and uh, an inner very significant uh, poem which relates to what I just said. Material, energetic and the celestial knot. Knot of material and knot of energy. Knots that are shadows of infinite celestial knot. I think Ayerson was really convinced that knots has to do with the real substratum of um, energy and of uh, material energy, of um, the material world, but at the same time with the uh, celestial knot, with the universe. And we will show, try to show that this this is exactly what uh, it has been discovered recently in physics and uh, in, other, in other fields. So you, here we have nodi come stelle, stelle come nodi, knots as star, star as knots, which is, in fact, uh, I mean, Ayerson is uh, inviting us in this uh, work to look at these um, spheres, and the, the, the spheres are not isolated spheres. They are not a point. They are not a point in a space. No, they are spheres related, which interact, which interact. And if you look at the micros microscopic level, <coughs> these, these spheres are, in, in fact, not. They they form knots. They can be so like knots. And uh, if you look at the, I mean, this is a, a look at the microscopic level. If you look at the macroscopic level, at the level of the universe, then this uh, sphere become celestial bodies. And these uh, relationship with this interaction is uh, in fact as to be seen as a knot the stru structure. Here you have a kipus formed up by three components which are profoundly interconnected and uh, which cannot separate. You have the textile with a warped up, then you have the double string like a braid, like a braid, which is um, uh, intertwined into itself, and then you have the knot toward what these uh, 
uh, at the same time, the textile and the string uh, go to form these, uh, these knots. Sorry. So I think uh, knots unravel the, the mysteries of the living world and unlocks the secret of the universe. This is, is the message we can deduce from uh, many works by Ayers and by other people. So Jorge Ayers seems ever to be seeking the mystery behind the beautiful and infinite variety of forms and beings that are inherent in nature and in our universe, as well as the essential patterns that ensure the intertwining and at the same time the unity of this form and being. Ayerson one gaze upon the living world and upon cosmos through his interest in the knotted patterns belong to his time and of long before. Out the depths of his imagination, he emerged with a set of intuition about the organization of the universe, which paralleled those of order who have followed the same path and have forget a tangible link between the microcosm and the, the macrocosm. Even an earth and all living things. An identical form of principle, the knot, has been found in the underlying structure of the thinnest component part and in the, the gigantic nebula in the universe. This is a unique aim uh, which may explain a uh, some, let's say, platonic and the concrete passion for forms and their archetypal model, which are knots and links. Links or union or connect the composition of knots. If you reach in couples some knots, you have what we call a connected union union of knots. Uh, this. Three example, I will take three example, we attract the attention of Ayers and passionate him. It can be said that this example has been a, a source of continuous inspiration for his work and conversely that some of his work knots and written reflection about them have, let me say, focusing the scientific and philosophical development. The first example is that around the 90s was part of the idea that elementary particles can be identified with topological distinct knots. Recently, the theoretical physicists Fader and other suggested a theoretic model where knots emerge as soliton, soliton what all, or stable mm -hmm. finite energy solution to the pertinent nonlinear field equation. There are like a lot of nonlinearity in, in knots, you know. When knots are involved in, uh, in fields, then they, they, they there are a lot of uh, non-linear property that, that emerge from these, these fields. Even more recently, it was discovered that knots create a barrier to the full dissipation of magnetic energy in a fluid patterns. The second example is the following. The natural tendency of things to tangle may explain uh, the three-dimensional nature of the universe and uh, how it is formed. Very recently, in 2017, a team of physicists hypothesized that shortly after it popped into existence 30 billion years ago, the universe was filed by knots, formed from flexible strands of energy which are called the flux tub, tubes that links elementary particles together. This is a very recent uh, uh, re um, discovery. And then come the 
particular example, which is a very strict, strict example, very important, mm -hmm. and which is um, that knobs are essential for maintaining and regenerating life. We know today that twisting, coiling, and knotting operation are able to mm. increase or to decrease the structural and the physiological function of the genome and the cell nucleus. I don't know if there are, there are here some uh, students in biology, but uh, biology has been conserved in the last uh, 20 years a lot by research on knots and links. So in the past decades, it has become clear that the topological form of ADNA molecule, the structural modification of the chromatin, which is inside the nucleus of the cell, mm -hmm. and the spatial architecture of the chromosome, which are very important for life, exert an important influence on the way in which DNA acts within the cell. In particular, Enzymes topoisomeras, which convert DNA from one topological form to another, appear to have a profound role in the central genetic events of DNA replication, transcription, transcription and recombination. These effects allowed life science to understand the mechanism responsible for the knotting and the unknotting of a DNA molecule. So we have knotting and unknotting into the cell. The cell is a center, is a laboratory in some sense, is a living laboratory of knotting and unknotting, transformation and operation. In fact, the DNA in the cell knots and knots tease and untease itself according to a definite scheme. Not and the links appear during the replication and the recombination. Enzyme topoisomeras, which behave like topological entities in living organisms, are responsible for the not and nothing. They are able to open a strand of DNA at a particular point, locus, grasp another strand, pass it through the opening, and then close the opening. In other words, these enzymes replace overcrossing by undercrossing, exactly as the knot do. Topoisomerase facilitate this whole process from the original splicing to the recombination, which is a of course, uh, an essential condition to have a replication of life. To summarize, we can say that knotting and knotting are among the fundamental processes which make possible the complex form of life. Let me summarize the work of Ayerson by stressing some terms, some topos, some idea. Because, you know, this is so multifaceted work, so complex, that I would, I would like to try to show some, some terms which seem to me be very important in, in his work. The first is the concept and the idea of a transformation. Knots and the interlacing are pretopological, pre primitive, and at the same time meaningful gestures. They are only apparently simple manipulation opera operation, but in fact, they are seen of a complex body and cognitive strategies. Precisely profound, profound transformation, so, so, such as a stretching, torsion, intertwining that never keep unchanged the space, for example, the surface of the canvas, and the matter, generally textile, upon which there's a transformation act. Now, in their genuine alterity and secrete complexity, knots and interlacing express intense energy and the streaking 
singularity which put in motion of things and at the same time knots and interlacing reorganize, reconfigure and convert these things in other things with new qualities. This makes possible the emergence of a new and richer phenomenology and ontology, say that philosophically, of things and events, and also give rise to a new web of relation and meanings. Interesting is also the fact that we find knots and interlacing at a level at all levels of reality, from the infinite large to the infinite small, or wherever they exist, these knots, these knots in a multiplicity of forms, in a really great multiplicity of forms. The second, second term I would like to speak about is that of a metamorphosis. Now, the reality and also the language are elaborated and twisted by Hegel's put it in movement in order to see behind the common object and the appearances some imaginative and the perceptual metamorphosis of them. He speaks about that in the following poem. I leave uh, you reading in Spanish and I, I read in, in, in Italian. Contemplo la sporcizia e vedo una rosa, ma non una rosa nella sporcizia, ma la sporcizia trasformata in rosa. Osservo una rosa e vedo la sporcizia, che alimenta la sua bellezza. Dalle radici alla corolla, così la rosa e la sporcizia sono la stessa cosa perché oggi sono sporcizia e domani rosa. For Ayers, the world is continuously subject to a kind of a metamorphosis, which concerns the things as well as the living be beings. But only our aesthetic and the poetic awareness, sensibility, are able to perceive the intimate unfolding of this metamorphosis. There is a relationship between a metamorphosis possibility and utopia. Metamorphosis has to do with the utopia, which for Robert Nuzil has the same meaning of the word possibility. When we permit to this possibility to develop, then arises an utopia. This is similar to the process when we observe the metamorphosis of some elements in a composite phenomenon, for example, in physics or in chemistry. So the utopia is like the experiment by means of which one observes the possible transformation of an element and the effect that the transformation would produce in that complex phenomenon which we call which we call life. The third tema is uh, on infinite and proliferation. <coughs> Let me stress some aspect of this topos. <coughs> the endless family of topological combination. The first aspect is in mathematics. The endless family of a topological combination of interlaced or knotted forms gave in the infinite variety of possible organic things we encounter in nature. Think of many botanic structures which are knotted. Mm -hmm. And in the handcrafted world of objects, think especially of the art of weaving of textile. Jörg Eliasson seems to be in quest of the mystery behind the beautiful and finite variety of form and beings that are inherent in nature and in our universe, as well as the essential patterns that ensure the intertwining and at the same time the harmonious, harmonious unit of this form and beings. I think that Ayerson tried to imagine the infinite beyond the finite and apparent image we usually have of things. 
In El Dialogo Infinito, uh, ninth, ninth five, or ninth four, I don't remember, he said that the not express an intimate part where rebellion and intuition met and joined together in an act of creation. But the not also express a concrete part which take pl pl place within space and time and along which culture, knowledge, practice and people come to be intertwined and not the for constructing it an infinite di dialogue. You know, in physics you have a dimension which cannot be seen, not even uh, visualized. Beyond our foul dimension, the three spatial and the temporal one, there exists maybe other dimension for space and time. For example, there are extra dimensions for space and time which are rallied up and therefore they cannot be visualized. This theory was proposed by Calus and Klein in the 1930s in the attempt to explain the role of electromagnetic force in general relativity of Einstein. Now there's an extra dimension or a compact. In fact, uh, they are noted which means that they form a multidimensional space-time was hidden dimension cannot be visualized because they live at very sm small scales, such as the one with which theoretical physicists try to explain. But even at our, say, human scale, there are dimensions relating to our body, brain, and mind. We now know that three spheres ultimately relate and they cannot be artificially separate, body, brain, and mind. They are re really, in many ways, relate, physiological, biological, con from the cognitive point of view, from the psychological point of view, and they cannot be separate. So they are relating to our body, brain, and mind, which cannot be directly perceived. And we need to go more in depth in our sensibility and uh, mental activity in order they may be partially grasped. Very like art and mathematics are two different or for similar ways of approaching and imagining this other dimension of life. I think uh, we can found out some ontology in the cosmology in the work of A.S. We should try to read among uh, different texts by A.S what uh, we can call an ontology and a cosmology. In fact, things and the living be being belonging to spheres, worlds, which are very different with respect to the universe, the living creatures, the creator, or with respect to that we think be often illusorily the reality, can suddenly intersect and interlace themselves in a certain locus or in a certain moment of our existence and our mind. Each thing or being necessarily has its own individuality, but it became a very individual, individuate entity, an individual, when it takes the form of an interlacing an entrela, an intreccio of connection, thanks to which the individual reflects itself, uh, actually the, 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 the very word is si riverbera, but I don't know how to translate that, into an all, into the universe. And reciprocally the all, the universe reflects itself into every single individual.
whatever be it a thing or a living being. The idea, this idea, this tema, which play an important role in the poetic world and the ontolog ontological, cosmological vision of the Hales, which may be referred to a certain Neoplatonic and Leibnizian <laughs> conception, is magnificently expressed in the poem Co Corpo Multiplicado, Corpo Multiplicato in Poesia Escrita. So, you can read in Spanish again, I read in Italian. Ref please take the time to meditate on this. Uh, on the mi philosophical meaning of this poem, not only on the poetic, which is, of course, important and beautiful, but there, are, there is a philosophy behind this uh, poem. There is a, a vision, a philosophical ontology. Non ho confini. La mia pelle è una porta aperta e il mio cervello una, co una casa vuota. La punta delle mie dita. You can see in Spanish, yes? You can read in Spanish? Yeah, okay. La, pu le pu la punta delle mie dita tocca facilmente e firmamento il suolo di legno. Non ho piedi né testa. Le mie braccia e le mie gambe sono braccia e gambe di un animale che starnutisce e che non ha confini. Se godo siamo tutti a godere anche se non tutti godono. Se, se piango siamo tutti a piangere, anche se non tutti piangono. Se mi siedo su una sedia sono migliaia a sedere sulle loro sedie. E se fumo una sigaretta il fumo raggiunge le stelle, lo stesso film a colori nella stessa sala buia, mi congiunge e mi separa da tutti, sono uno solo e come tutti sono uno soltanto. So the individual exists together with the world, with the universe, with the other individual. Let me say a few words about the theme of infinite in literature and poetry. Ah, I'm sorry, it is in Italian. I, 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 yes. The infinite is a recurring and vital theme in many forms of knowledge and human activity, particularly in mathematics and literature. Mathematics, as is well known, would be inconceivable and impracticable without the concept of infinite. It truly intervenes in all its intuition, construction, and demonstration concerning a number and space. So one can say that the possibility of thinking the infinite either actual, as in Kant or theory of sets and the transfinite numbers, or imaginary, as in almost all mathematical theories starting from opinion elements until the Hilbert n dimensional space of operators, where n is considered infinite in quantum theories. So these uh, inf think the infinite or either either actual or imaginary, it is essential uh, one natural sa raison d'être. There is no mathematics without the concept of infinite. Analogous, the free and liberating thinking of, of the infinite has been uh, the founding act of literature. Virgilio, Dante, Petrarca, Leopardi, and Borges, or poets of the infinite par excellence, par antonomasia. For Leopardi, the creative poetic act cannot be conceived, but only is its roots sinks in the imagination, in the mysterious in ins inscrutable substratum of nature, and only if moved by a deep perception and a reflection toward the infinite. The infinite is seated between the dream and the memory. In the poetry of Eos, as in that of Leopardi, I guess there is a certain significant similarity between them. We have a merging fusion of space and time in a kind of melodic sound which revives things and with them 
in some sense dissolve. In a way even more significant, this emerging of space and time depends upon a solicitation of the memory, which when disclosed become dream, and this dreaming eliminates certain spatial and temporal limitation. The fourth term is beauty. If I am right, for Ayers, the not is the logic where the real and the possible met. Where reality can have different realization in many possible worlds. The not is immaterial, concrete, and immaterial ideal at the same time. The not to live in a temporal dimension, which is that of the existence of the artist and of the other human beings. But it is also a continuous critique of the unidimensional and li linear time of classical physics. The not is a symmetry and a harmony, but it is also rebellion and freedom. The not surprise, wonders, enchant and touches. The modes of representation and the manifestation of this extraordinary topological object belong to, the la to a language whose character and meanings are endless. Here language doesn't mean code. No, does it not mean code? Which would be too reductive, the word code. Language has another meaning. But a rather complex writing, a scriptura made up of scenes, structure, relations between them, and meanings. One a scriptura somehow in the sense of Galileo Galilei, say. When he wrote the well-known metaphor of the open book of nature, The universe cannot be read until we have learned the language and become familiar with the character in which it is written. It is written in mathematical language and the letter or triangle, circle and other geometrical figures, without which means it is humanly impossible to comprehend a single word. La filosofia della natura è scritta in un grandissimo libro che continuamente ci sta aperto dinanzi agli occhi. Is the language of Galileo is very, as Calvino said, is very one of the most important writers of Italian literature. Agli occhi io dico l'universo, ma no. Si può intendere se prima non si impara a intendere la lingua e conoscere i caratteri nei quali è scritto. E gli scritto in lingua matematica, i caratteri sono triangoli, cerchi ed altre fin figure geometriche senza i quali mezzi è impossibile intenderne unicamente parola. Senza questi è una girarsi vanamente per un oscuro labirinto. Il saggiatore, the Seia 623. Of course we have here to substitute the triangle and the circle and other linear figures by knots and braids. Today, in physics and in mathematics, we have not to do more with a triangle and a circle in the Euclidean sense, but we have to do, at least in the most recent uh, physical theory, with uh, knots and braids. In his obra El Dialogo Infinito, he also defines loquitus como a sophisticato langu uh, linguaggio, más que código, porque él estaba convencido de que no se trataba solo de un sistema de contabilidad, sino también de una forma de escritura. Now, the character of the book of nature composed geometry and the symphony was variation or endless. In science and especially in mathematics, the knot is uh, the result of the combination of the abstract of the abstraction of mind, but it is also the more intrinsic expression of the materialization of an ideal model, of an idea, 
in the platonic sense. In uh, Veder, Evocare, Cantare Roma, Elios and Ruot. As in the topology of notes, they change with an extreme, an extreme flexibility and they pass from the phenomenal world, which is a three-dimensional and dale, to mental dimension, which often escape to our perception. So, Eyerson considers mathematics as a, a human exploration, understanding, which is a part of a more general quest, and which gives pleasure, wonder, and beauty. He feels is at another form of art, where the true and the beauty can harmonize. Eyerson wrote, Luis. So two philosophical ideas belong to Engels of vision. He was very critical against the mechanization of the body, of feeling and of mind, and he was against the technological and anthropological mutation of people. When technology exerts a total power on human beings, producing alienation, alien nation and servitude. The power and control of technology are to criticize because they considerably reduce some essential qualities of life, like attention, perception, and sensibility, like attraction and love, which are essential for maintaining forever perception, imagination, and humanity as essential qualities. According to, to, to to Ayers, we need a new natural philosophy resting on two main ideas. An in-depth, even renewing relationship between human beings and nature, a new vision of knowledge based on innocence, doubt, and curiosity, and oriented toward the construction of a deep interaction between the different of abstract, symbolic, and the practical knowledge. This vision requires a deep philosophical critique of the hyper-specialization of our education and also a critique of the spectacular, spectacular, spectacular raising and monetization of culture. So what is the legacy and the significance of uh, your gayers and work and life? It is condensed in these uh, three sentences. The first is uh, Werk ist weg, emphasize the artist Paul Klee. Work is uh, a fact. The second is uh, emphasized by this uh, sentence of Jorge Machado, Caminante non è cammino, se ha camino all'andar. 
e la vita è un'opera maestra ai lati di Jorge Eggers. The World to of Art is a part, or better yet, an open quest, an of, a not uh, waiting to be haunted and retired. A, a quotation from Eggers. La metafora della red come del nudo, come la del nudo, e non hai red sino nudos, evidentemente, è también la metafora della existenza. Desde la cadena dei nudos, in forma di spirale che constituisce l'ADN primordiale della vita, hasta il sondabile paquet del ner de nervio sui neuronas che confirmano a quel milagro della evoluzione che è il cerebro umano. Toda nuestra existencia es la historia, uh, here is a uh, really important uh, sentence, es la historia de una estructura que para sobre sobrevivir tiene continuamente que inventarse una infinita red de informaciones y relaciones e interactivos que alarguen su horizonte final. Fragmento de la escala infinita de Ayers. And you have a quotation uh, which I would like to finish uh, with uh, this uh, quotation of a poet which exerted a deep and constant fascination on the Peruvian artist and poet. The present and time past, or both perhaps present and time future. And that the, the first is that there is no separation barrier between past and uh, present and future. And this was a very important idea by, uh, stressed by Ayers. The present and time past are both perhaps present in time future, and time future is a contained in time past. If all time is eternally present, all time is uh, unreasonable. When we call the beginning is of the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where it starts from. So, what means that uh, we are just starting to explore and to diffuse the work of Ayers. And we have to, to do these uh, new parts because uh, of the, import the importance and the significance of the Ayers no part with she leaves us a, a very important uh, message and a very important uh, lesson to be, to be better understood and to be transmitted to, to other people. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Question, comments, preguntas? Criticas. Please feel be, be, be free to put question and make comments. Very specific question in knots as stars or stars as knots. Maybe you can yeah. put, put it on the screen. Yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah. We have that in the exhibition in the cultural center yeah. of the university. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, uh, the diagonals that are going left to right, the short white lines or segments. Yes. How do you understand them? Oh, well, I, I, I think that uh, these uh, segments are filaments or strands. In the, in the imagination of a world, they are strands. They are not segments in the geometrical sense of the world. There are strands that uh, connect, make, uh, in, make possible the interaction between these uh, 
spheres, but you know, this is a, is a very superficial visualization of the, the, the I think uh, in his, uh, I mean, <laughs> imaginary work, which uh, was this uh, painting is only the results, the, 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 the visual result, but the, prof the process of imagination behind this result is that is it construct uh, some kind of uh, not the structure in the, at the cosmological level, at the universal level. So this is a segment for me, or strands, or like, uh, like strings, but intertwined the strings, which uh, connect and make interaction between, between these, uh, make possible interaction between, it, between these, uh, these uh, these uh, celestial bodies can be galaxies, can be planets, can be satellites, can be other. This is a, ref a representation of the universe in some sense. You, know? you have two elements. Uh, you have different uh, scale of, of dimension, of uh, measure, yeah? big one, li like in the universe. You know? A, a black hole is very massive, for example. Is uh, more massive than the than the than the the sun, which is the biggest stars of our galaxy. And so you have to have to 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 um, to consider this. Uh, this uh, for me is a real representation of the intertwined trauma of the of the universe. There is no linearity. Here, of course, for the sake of visualization, we have linearity. These are you, you can perceive these as linear segments, no? And these are points. But this will be a mistake to understand in this way this uh, this, uh, this painting, this uh, work. These are the, they are not points, they are not uh, Euclidean segments, they are not uh, mm, linear segments. <coughs> Just uh, can I ask, <coughs> what did you say about the black hole? Black hole, did you mention black holes? Yes. Uh, I didn't quite follow how that relates. Yeah, black hole is um, well, is related, I think, because in black hole you have uh, in the deep at the deep level of black hole, which is the you know black hole. You cannot write here. No, you you have a black hole. You have the horizon of the black hole, and then you have the the bottom of the black hole, which is uh, like a singularity. When we speak about singularity, it means that it has a very uh, wild topological form. It's like a, a knotted structure from, from where no energy can escape, no, cannot pass the horizon. So in, in this sense, the black hole is, a, is an attractor of energy. No? And at the core, at the core of this, this, uh, this black hole, there is a knot. For, for the knot, the black knot of, of Hogg, eh, I think he was thinking of some topological, top, uh, cosmological correspondence, similarity with uh, uh, research in, in, uh, on the universe and especially on the black hole. I think this is my hypothesis. I don't know exactly. But I remember that he was very, very much interested in the cosmological models. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I might uh, uh, miss some explanations from the previous uh, talk you gave. Uh, it is possible to uh, outline a chronology between 
the notes work by photography and the studies on the note from the 1960s to now because how much access he had to some of these theories that uh, because I think that he worked some of this uh, stuff not following those theories yeah. but following the idea of a uh, structure of the universe that came from before uh, and at some point he kept researching and found a way of um, working with that establishing a dialogue with science or keeping the dialogue with science but more in depth is it possible to build up that, uh, that yeah, uh, uh, what would be the, the main uh, uh, say uh, how you call it uh, landmarks yeah I will uh, well I I, I have met uh, I was uh, in the 90s uh, in the middle of the 90s and uh, it was the time where uh, develops many of the most interesting uh, physical theories in mathematical theory on knots. Well, at the time, knot theory um, knows the renewing uh, on its surface, development, a new development. And immediately in this, uh, in this, uh, in this area, the, the, there were a lot of application to uh, quantum physics and to cosmology of knot theory. One of the most first and famous uh, development is a string theory, which uh, hypothesized that at the mm, basis of the quantum mechanical Planck level of reality, there are not points, but there are strings, knotted strings that form more complex. Then I remember that uh, uh, in uh, Jorge, in, in this year, was reading some books. Uh, two of them was about the topology of knots. One is a famous book by a, a Polish, Polish, Pol 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 Polish uh, mathematician, is a <coughs> Kuratowski, <coughs> and he, he was uh, really fascinated, but couldn't understand all the technical aspect of the, but he was fascinated by the conceptual, uh, that conceptual, um, it, 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 it was attracted by the conceptual um, significance of the, 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 the knot. And uh, also he was uh, reading uh, uh, some books about the cosmological matter. For example, I remember that he was uh, really informed on string theory. He knows what was string theory. Uh, and uh, so I suppose that uh, he, he made some reading of, about uh, this uh, theory. And he was uh, really wondering and uh, was fascinated by the similes by uh, uh, his work. In some sense, his work was. Uh, before the, the development, it was anterior to that work. And that development, which uh, for him was a, a really confirmation of the interest of his uh, artistic part and the conceptual part. The, the, there were some, uh, so he never contributed to, of course, to the development. He, he, never, he, he make any work about uh, Mathematics and the physics of knots, but uh, ah, even in biology, in uh, biology, he was reading the books by Kuhn. Kuhn, do you know who is? He's a, a one of the most important bio, bio, contemporary biologists, and he was reading some article about the 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 knots of DNA. So he, he was aware of uh, their development, and he was fascinated. My idea is that he is too strong the work, but he, for a year, he anticipated some of their development, uh, development at, at least in mine, in his mind, and after that, he 
saw that development would go very, very fast, and he tried to understand some of those developments. Yeah. In some sense, we can say that uh, um, well, for me, it's an example of um, intimate um, influence and the reciprocal mutual influence between art and uh, science. I don't know what, what do you think about um, Yeah, I agree. But uh, that's the time also when he was working with Leonardo's uh, treaty yes. on knots and the fly of birds. Yes, exactly, yes, yes. But Leonardo so was one of uh, his most, Im most important source of, uh, of influence, I think, of yeah. inspiration. For was connecting many other things. Yes. Yeah, Leonardo play I think play a very important role because he spent many years in working about the anodamenti degli uccelli, etc., etc. There are a series, as you know, of this uh, work. And Leonardo, he go to Florence, he make an exhibition in this Pistoia Center of Art, of, uh, what is the name of this um, Pistoia Center? Near of Prato, of Pistoia. He, 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 he did a, an ex exhibition there uh, with, um, I can't remember the, the, the name, and uh, he, one of these exhibitions was exactly about the anodamenti degli uccelli. Uh, yes, there are two uh, ideas that I wanted to uh, comment here. First is that in your talk you said, uh, I think you said that uh, the natural state of things is chaos. So uh, maybe Ilsen's knots would try to resemble this chaos in nature. So this would be interesting as a process of an artist because usually artists take materials and they try to give them certain order uh, to create something else. Um, so in this process, uh, Ilsen would be using certain order and structure <coughs> to create a disorder and chaos. I was thinking that maybe that's the process he was trying to use, which is a bit strange. And uh, the other idea is about beauty. So in Western culture, in tradition, beauty is the result of, uh, of order, measure, and proportion, usually. That's, what our, that's the idea we have from ancient uh, Greece. So in this case, uh, if um, Ilson wanted to create this kind of resemblance to, to uh, chaos in nature, and if Ilson considered that his works were beautiful, as they could be, in this case we would have a work of art that is beautiful, but that is representing chaos and disorder. So I don't know if you understand him, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, that he's using um, the, the, our ideas a bit the other way around, as we have usually about um, beauty, order, and uh, chaos. Well, what I said is exactly that. Um, chaos, we have, um, what is chaos? In chaos, we have a certain order. Chaos is an object, actually, it's chaotic. In chaos, we have uh, an order which emerges from disorder. This is the chaos. chaos. Chaos is a theory which, uh, which studies how order emerges from disorder. Okay. What, what is interesting in this, uh, uh, what I show is exactly that, uh, you know. See, this uh, Lawrence attractor, why, or chaotic, of course, because they, they have some uh, non deterministic uh, uh, evolution and the question or no linear, so necessarily they are chaotic. But uh, uh, this chaos is ordered in some sense, by what? By periodic orbits that are knotted. In this case, as in many cases, what give order, dynamic, what give dynamically order is exact, exactly knots is a very big stuff. And now, uh, what means uh, uh, order? It 
means that you have a, you have a structure. Uh, if you have a disorder, you have a very poor symmetry. You have not symmetry. Disorder means that you have not symmetry. You have another kind of symmetry which is uh, called uh, broken symmetry. Then you have not symmetry. Then you have disorder. The disorder comes from the fact that the, the, the symmetry is absent, is di disappeared. When you have symmetry, then you have order. Okay, now Knox is one of the most symmetric uh, topologic objects. That means that if you discover that some structure is uh, characterized by Knox, it means that you have at the same time order, but order is also harmony, is a symmetry. Therefore, you have also beauty. But for me, beauty has to do with uh, symmetry, with uh, harmony, at least, uh, at least in physics, uh, in science and in mathematics. In the everyday life, it has to do with harmony and with also singularity, with some broken symmetry. If an object is uh, too symmetry, too symmetrical, that means that it is static, it is a rhythm, it is not in movement, it has, it has no motion, you know, it has no transformation. You know, it needs to be symmetrical but open to some new symmetries. Huh? So, and uh, even in every, in, in, in everyday life uh, we need not all symmetry, all not, as not to be completely in order. If you have a rigid order, you have no more emotion, you have no more attraction, motion, you have no more attraction, you have no more perception of something and uh, so on. So there is a, a very deep relationship between chaos, order, uh, knots, and beauty. That uh, what I was. I, I want to stress in my talk. Thank you. Lucien, I wanted to ask you particularly between this relationship you stress with macroscopic space and microscopic immediacy. Um, just to know your thoughts on the performance of La Scala Infinita, because you've made a, a very interesting reading on the, on the canvas, uh, but what do you think about the setting? Do you remember there was this, wo this woman sleeping, um, some stairs? We don't have any image. No, I, I think not. Yeah, but I remember, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, well, because in the catalog there's a little essay which precisely mentions Stephen Jay Gould the, and also the structure of the DNA. So perhaps you have, if you have some thoughts on it. Yeah, uh, well, what, what, what I want to stress is that, um, let me define, Of the living world, the 
find that not as big as the Cape May, it seems to get smaller and larger, smaller to me than the Valley of the Ocean. Of course, we are the Atlas. The Atlas does not have more than six. Six is gone after the end of the Cretan and has been lost. So we are the, 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 the not at the level of the Northern Cretan. And if we are to not, if we did not dwell into what's there, we cannot start to last as an atom. The students are, are the, the strongest elements in that. And we are not at the level of the brain because the, the neurons do not have filaments which should keep the students from the synapse interacting between the two neurons. So for me, Mediated by our study of the neural mechanism of image. And this mediation is a relationship to the start of the body of beautiful excellence of image of the image. But even even the was it was it the the
was letting off the all the stories. And she saw this little sweet thing leaping at the water that was over the boat. So it passed the little the water and leaped it. Okay. It's all sweet. But they say to the girls, you have to say to the child gets almost tired. Yes, um, just to add something to the discussion on the beauty in chaos, uh, the concept of the sublime and the irregular. Uh, in some case, one could discuss, what could argue that uh, some of the pieces are not looking to be, or not seeking to be uh, beautiful. But as you said, there is a sort of emotional uh, charge there that can be linked to the, the, the idea of the sublime, that is, is not beautiful, is not ugly, is just overwhelming. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, historically, in piece of art, uh, people that were working on that were uh, looking for the irregular, and in nature, in particular. That looked irregular, but was very organized.
Probably many of us would say we live in a period of social and cultural entropy that is loss of imagination, loss of variety, and return to fixed forms of the past. So is it possible to say that Entropy is also, and you might not want to use the, the concept of entropy, but it's the one that is familiar to me. Entropy is also uh, produced by knots. Therefore, uh, would you say a prison is a complex of knots? And therefore, there's a, a decision in Ailson's work, is there, to make certain kinds of knots and not other kinds? you are to, in, in a closed dynamic, there are many theories which are very interesting, in which we can demonstrate that not uh, uh, they, they avoid dissipation of an energy. Now we need a new energy, we need not to dissipate energy, we need to have new energy mental, emotional, culture, and, uh, and not a kind of energy. So we have to conserve energy in, in the many manifestations of this energy. Not can be a way of, uh, of regenerating energy. For example, a way of regenerating a new intellectual or cultural energy. Not, uh, I miss here in the sense of uh, a new interaction between uh, people, between research, between culture, between, uh, between uh, fields of knowledge and so on. Would you say that um, this energy of the knots is also a figure for um, the divine or the, the god or in Nelson's work? Yeah, yeah, but not uh, divine in the religious sense. I think uh, this is a very important point. Uh, on the laws of Tyrant, Remember, he was very attracted by monastery. He even uh, spent some short time in <coughs> a few monasteries in Italy, at least to visit some of them, for example, uh, Franciscan and Benedictine monastery in, uh, <coughs> in uh, Italy. <coughs> but uh, not because he was uh, religious, not because he was. Uh, he has la, la fede, la foi, 
No, he told me he was uh, searching for, you know, he, he has a very, he sometimes a very paganic, paganistic conception of, of uh, the, 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 the design. The design, he, he, he was searching the design in the, in the, in, in the world, in the people, in the, in the natural, in the, in the, The design was a special way, form of life, a special way of perception. That was the design. The design was, uh, was not a religious part, uh, at least in the, in the sense of the, in the, in the, sense of the monotheistic religion. Mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, I think he was in search of uh, some kind of uh, Transcendental or transcendent uh, uh, perception of life. Uh, some kind of design of the universe, no? No, no. This it would be a. No, no. To find the design of the, the universe means that the, there is a problem. For example, if you take the creationists, they think that the, the world, the universe, the mind, the, the, the life is, uh, is uh, uh, only but the result of a, a divine factor. It's, it's already established, so it's already special. No, no, this is not the sense. For the point, I think that Eretic, and I totally agree with the point of view, uh, believe in a continuous self-regeneration of life and mm -hmm. in a spontaneous way, regeneration of life and life. It's a dynamic of the world, not the man of the world, yeah. the not the program, not the program of the world. You know, if, he, if, you, if you say that uh, life is the result of a, 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 a priori decided problem, it can be decided by a god, it can be yes. decided by a miraculous stuff uh, like a DNA, but it's not the case because we are not only in DNA, we are in many things, many other uh, biological aspects of in, in, in our life. So, no, it, it was really, uh, no, his philosophy was a very, very different from a kind of It was not the philosophy, it was uh, mm, I would like to say a general philosophy. If you have a, in mind the problem, you think that there is a only one truth, a unique fact to the solution of the problem and to explain it of, of the world, of the world. The world doesn't need explanation because it is the result of uh, some problem uh, decided by the God. But he, uh, on the contrary, I think we, we, we have to search for an explanation, but we, we cannot find a, a definitive and uh, total Muy bien, muy buenas noches por acompañarnos. Muchas gracias al profesor Boy, para quien por favor podemos darle un caluroso aplauso. Damos por cerrado entonces este ciclo de seminarios. Hasta pronto. Gracias.